How are you doing? I'm Sean and I want to apologize first because I may stutter a lot in this video. This is actually my fourth recording due to a lot of problems and uh, I'm just not used to recording like this where I have to do stuff without a script and uh, I'm really anxious. I have to overcome this so please bear with me. Last week, I asked you guys if you would like to see how I make music arrangement videos like seeing how it's done and what the process looks like. And the majority of Wolves wanted me to make a video on this. So without further ado, let's get this started. Okay, my recording software just crashed. And uh, I, anyway, <clears throat> I used the software MuseScore to make music arrangements. And this is what it looks like when you first start it up. You can see my recent works and uh, let's click on the create new score. As for the title, enter the song that you want to arrange. As for the subtitle, I would enter the music album title. I got it from a piracy website because this is the only website that I can find the proper title. Which I hope is correct. <laughs> As for the composers, it's basically the credits for many music arrangers out there. As you can see right here, I get the sources from Wiki. I also get the sources from Lyrical Nonsense too. You just enter the name of the website and a song that you would like to find or the anime title. And once you go to the website, you see the lyricist being created right here and the composer and the original artist's name. Since this is an insert song, lyrical nonsense would most likely not have those in their web on their websites. Just copy and paste the information, the VA of this singer, of this character is Amy Mita. I take the, I take the name from Google search because I prefer the first name to be at the front and the last name to be at the last, uh, I mean the, the last name to be at the back. As for lyricist, I use it as a subcategory for um, like a, let's say if I were to make a short version of this song, then I would end, then I would put it right here. But in this case, I would want to make a game size version out of this song. As for the copyright, I don't use it. Basically what it does is, you enter whatever you want and then it will appear at all of the pages down at the bottom of the sheet. <coughs> I don't copyright, I mean, I don't label my music sheets like that, so I'll show you how I do it at the end of the video. <laughs> After you're done entering the information, you click on next. I usually make piano arrangements, so I'll go for the grand staff. The key signature, the tempo, and the time signature, I'll get to that later on. Once you're done with everything, the basic stuffs, you click on finish. And this is what it should look like after you finish entering the basic information. Just let me organize. And done. What you do first when you're arranging a song is to find its time signature. And I can confirm you that the, sun, the time signature is in 4 quarter beats in a bar. And then you find the tempo, which is 97 quarter beats per minute. I can't play the song, but I'll leave a link in the description. Since I want to avoid copyright issues. As for the key signature, just arrange the first few parts of the song. The opening, the intro, then the verse, 
and then you'll be able to see what kit and nature the song is in. I'm not quite sure yet. I could be wrong because I've only arranged the opening and the intro of the song. I'm assuming, <coughs> well, <laughs> I'm presuming that this song is in G flat major. What I do next is to find the bass notes or the root notes. In return, you can also find the chord progression of the song, which you can later arrange the left hand accompaniment in any way you want, in your own style. As for me, I would like to arrange the left hand, well, the entire arrangement in general to sound as accurate, as similar to the original song as possible. Not changing the genre, not changing the feeling, the vibes. You get the point. Okay, I found the bass notes and this is what it looks like. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You should arrange a section of a song first because if you were to arrange the entire right hand staff of, of a song, then it would feel tedious, well, to me at least, because it would be more interesting to arrange section by section rather than uh, arranging the entire staff alone first because it, it would feel really long. Take it as an advice from a person who arranged a lot of music sheets. There's also this part where I start decorating the music arrangement. Well, I would want to, the song to stay as I mean I would want the arrangement to stay as accurate as possible. But uh, the decorating I meant is to add instrumentals from the song, which normally uh, a person wouldn't even hear. Okay, after that, after finishing the opening and the intro, I move on to the verse, the first verse of the song. When arranging the vocals or any instruments, I pay really high attention to the time value of each and every note. As you can see right here, this is the vocal. This is the vocal and um, the part where it's released, basically the rest, is where the singer inhales, I mean the, the singer breathes. You get what I mean, right? Because people can't sing continuously, they have to breathe and this is why I pay close attention to time values when arranging. This is the first verse and I'll be arranging the bass note next. In case you're curious, how the song would sound like with only the vocals and the bass note, it sounds like this. This is what it sounds like. Uh, I added the pedals because this sounds smoother and more romantic or more emotional I guess. Uh, I added a seam sign because it's repetitive. If you're a musician you're able to tell um, you're able to tell apart the sections of the song. Um, starting uh, this is the opening. Okay, it, be it went back to normal. I don't know what happened. <coughs> I'm guessing it was a Windows update or so. <coughs> anyway, uh, this is the opening. This is the intro section. And this is the first word section. Okay, I've arranged the left hand like this because if you were, if you listen the song, the words sounds really 
um, really, you know, normal. There's only the piano and I don't want to add any other unnecessary notes. I'm not going to add chords because it, it doesn't feel right if there's too much ambience. Also, um, I forgot to tell you, it's possible to play a song with only the bass notes, which is why a lot of easy songs are um, the, the left hand only has the bass note and nothing else. It... This process actually repeats for each section, for the second verse, for the pre-chorus, for the chorus, and so on, up until the end of the song. I won't be recording that or explaining how I would arrange the song because it would make the video too long. I just want to show you how I make Synthesia videos and not how I arrange music. <laughs> and also, pe there might be people out there who are watching my video and, and you know, studying other arrangers' arrangements sound like me. And I don't want to <laughs> ex explain too much. I'm not sure what the word is, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to expose my arrangement style to people. <laughs> you know, it's something private. It's like. It's like how you, um, let's say this is how you do stuff and then it's something personal if others copy you and you would feel personally attacked, I guess. It isn't over yet, I'll definitely talk about the key points of the method I use to, to make music arrangements, like how I haven't added the dynamics yet and so on. Okay, I'm back. I'll just brush through everything quickly. Um, yeah, I was going to make a piano one arrangement for Honoka solo, but then I realized that it would sound better if it's just a piano arrangement. If you've been following my channel, you you know that I'm trying to make an album of Love Life's solo songs and every year, you know, from from the characters for each year, the first year, second year and third year, there are piano arrangements and piano round arrangements instead of the second year. So I thought to myself maybe I should make a piano round arrangement. But then again it would be harder and it would take longer so I gave up on that. <laughs> At the first verse, the key signature actually changed and um, I actually had to ask some theory, music theory questions because I'm still a music student after all. When you look at here, I thought it was I thought it was A natural, but it really wasn't. I was too lazy to find its cadence and so I asked people on Musical's forum. And he told me that B double flat should be the right note. I thought it was in B double flat because um, there's no B double flat in G flat major or E flat minor. At the pre-chorus part, right here, the key signature actually changed, and you know it's really surprising that it went from it went from flat to sharp key signature. And it was really hard to find the chords, but thanks to the back vocals, I was able to determine its cadence, I mean its chord progression. The reason why I use dotted time values in a simple time signature is because it would take up a lot of space if I were to do this. If I were to do this, it would take up a lot of space. So I decided to use dotted um, dotted notes for all of my arrangements. If it's quavers, then I will use. If it's if it's like quartet or minimum, then I won't. As you can see right here at bar 22, this indicates that this note needs to be played by the right hand. So why? Am I not putting this note on the right hand sleeve? Uh, right hand sleeve. It's because I arranged the piano part in the 
original music where it actually plays the piano like that on the left hand stave so that's why I'm not going to put it up there besides I also mixed in the percussion with um, I mean along with the piano and about the watermark is right here on the first page left bottom corner side bottom left corner side <laughs> I meant after finishing arranging I go to files and I export them into PDF mp3 and midis after that I go to the MuseScore's website I click on my score and then I update this current score that I have what I do is I upload the MuseScore file onto the website so I can use MuseScore's send to YouTube feature this is where the synthesis CL video format comes from after that I go onto the sheet host I click on the upload and then I enter all the information right here that I get the sources from and I click on save and continue this is this is what it looks like this is how the description would look on my YouTube video description feel free to copy the format if you want it's just a way to keep your things organized and then I will choose the files and upload the PDF only. For the first three months I won't be uploading the MIDI file. I, I've already published this. This is why you don't see the publish button. I actually did it 22 hours ago but I had an error in the arrangement Send to YouTube, uh, send to YouTube musical feature thing. Well, you, if you've been a follower, then you will get the mistake that I keep making. I actually had to raise an octave higher because I forgot to for the opening and the ending part. <laughs> oh man, that was a close call. Seriously. Okay, for some reason I can update my. I can update my score. It's it's a bug with the website, and I have to completely delete the score and re-upload it. Okay, I wanted to show you how the process looked like for the send to YouTube feature, but Bandicam just crashed my entire laptop. So I couldn't show you that. Anyway, moving on. I copy the URL. I mean, uh, I set it to unlist it first. And then I copy the URL and go to free YouTube downloader. I know I can just download it from YouTube itself, but the quality would be much worse for some reason. It's much, it's much worse for some reason. Okay, while it's downloading, I go to download and find a perfect image for the thumbnail. I would pick more than one sometimes, and um, you know, just to be safe, to see which one fits better. I use paint.net to render them. I just hope that my laptop doesn't crash again because it's really lagging right now. I use Huge Film Express 2017 to edit my videos. I'm using an outdated version because my laptop system requirements aren't met for the latest version. I use the editor to just place my watermarkings and uh, you know, um, better sound phone. And then I uh, just export it. It takes about 30 minutes for a, for a minute and a half video. It's really sad. While I'm at it, here's a time lapse of me rendering an image.
Okay, I have no idea why. Try listening to this. At uh, the glissando. Compare it to the ending part. The glissando at the ending part seems to be slower, but I said it at the correct, I mean I said it at the same speed, so it's not my problem, it's MuseScore's fault, it's, it's a bug, and I don't want to redo all of this just because of that one minor error. It's really pathetic, oh my gosh. I'm gonna report this to the MuseScore's mods, I guess. After all of this is done, that's about it. I uploaded the video and that's just it. <laughs> Thanks for watching.